Ladies and gentlemen, let's read gaming to the com video. Currently, the CPU market is a bit of a tricky beast. However, if you are thinking of doing an upgrade, you may be best to listen to this piece of news because Intel's Broadwell CPUs are on schedule to be released in the first quarter of 2016. And get this, they will retain support for the X99 platform. Now, the CPUs, at least according to these rumors, will feature the same 8 and 6 core SKUs once again obviously depending on the price range that you're looking for but that's a good thing because those who are buying into the x99 platform have at least some level of an upgrade path now unfortunately we don't know the exact release date but from what we understand from rumors the sampling of the production of these processes will begin in the in the fourth quarter i'm sorry of 2015 Therefore, mass production most likely will start hitting full swing, let's say February slash March at the latest. Now, just because of this, the timing of all of this, the only real announcement date that Intel could utilize would be CBIT, that's C-E-B-I-T, which takes place mid-March, the 1651 a precise date. However, whether there's going to be an exact launch, whether it's going to be a paper launch, whether they're going to say, hey, you know, we're going to release these in, you know, the 31st of March or maybe early April, it's unknown. However, that's just what um, seems to be on the corner of everyone's lips right now because Intel have confirmed that their Broadwell X, uh, EP, I'm sorry, not XP, EP Xenon at E5 2600 V4 processors will be in the fourth quarter of 2015. Now those processors are obviously going to have a lot more cores and a lot more threads. So they're actually going to have 22 cores and because of the hyper threading that means there's going to be 44 threads which is a lot, a lot. Unfortunately, if you're thinking to yourself, well gee whiz, okay, that's Broadwell E, but what about Skylake E? <sighs> Unfortunately, Skylake E is a bit of a... It's becoming super duper annoying because the, the, the rumors are that it's going to be pushed to 2017 and the mainstream platform, KB Lake, will be released in 2016, the third quarter to be precise. Now, Intel have already also announced that they are going to be delaying their 10NM node until 2017, and this is why Canon Lake has been repositioned. Effectively, Intel were hit with a series of issues that they just weren't ready for, and therefore that's why they've had to introduce some of these intermediary processes and why there's a bit of turmoil at the moment in the CPU market. Now, regarding the SKUs, right for the second of Broadwell, it's unknown exactly what we're going to be getting. It would appear, however, that it's going to be very much like Haswell. So, for example, just how you've got, let's say, the 5820K, which has got six processor cores, or the 5960X, which has, like, you know, eight threads. It's looking... Oh, I'm sorry, eight cores and 16 threads. It's looking very similar. Um... You're going to have, obviously, support for DDR4. You've got high levels of uh, at level 3 cache. It's looking like it's going to be a pretty much a like-for-like -like replacement chip. So, for example, if you're talking the high-end uh, CPU, which, let's assume for the sake of argument, it's just incrementing the number. So, for example, it will be the uh, 6820K or the 6960X or whatever the derivative is. So, in that case, it would appear that the cache, the amount of PCI Express lanes which obviously are 40 the x99 chipset all of that is still going to be the same memory compatibility improves it's now going to support DDR4 2400 which is obviously better than 2133 but so you've got this kind of thing where it's like if you're buying into let's say the x99 chipset here's what I would personally suggest if you are considering hey, you know what, I'm going to upgrade my chipset. Skylake's actually less tantalizing, at least to me right now, because it's like, yeah, I've not exactly been super kind to Skylake, but it's like, if you're going to be upgrading to Haswell E, that's just for the sake of argument, 
say that you're in the market for a CPU right now, right? So you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to jump onto the CPU bandwagon. I'm going to go for the 5820K because it's roughly the same price as the 6700K, just for sake of argument. A little bit of a difference. There is definitely a price difference, but you know it's round about the same ballpark once you've uh, accounted for uh, you know all the other bits and pieces and maybe retail retailer gouging isn't as bad as it was. But anywho, so you say to yourself, well, gee, I'm going to go for that. Um, so you've got your Haswell A, you wait, and then Broadwelly is going to be on 14 NM. So at that point, you can make your decision next year and say, well. I'm going to stick with Broadwell E and I'm going to, you know, go for that route. Or you could just say, you know what, I'm actually not going to do anything. I'm going to wait for Zen. I'm going to see how that performs and then I'm going to go from there. And then you could just eBay your 5820K or whatever CPU you have, you've happened to buy. I'm not saying that's necessarily the best route. And obviously everyone is going to have different needs, different requirements, different desire and all that jazz. But it's, it's definitely a good possibility. Um, so yeah, but as I said, it's a bit of a weird time in the CPU market, to be honest, if you're fairly happy with the system you've got, let's just say for the sake of argument, you've got a 2500k, 2600k, something along those lines, particularly if it's reasonably overclocked, if not then, you know, buy like a decent uh, all-in-one water cooling unit, then you'll probably be pretty good, but if you've got a reasonable system, I'd wait. I mean, to be totally honest with you, the CPUs right now, I would wait until you've got higher level, core, uh, higher number of cores, so you can actually say, hey, in six months' time, twelve months' time, we'll know how multi-cores really benefit DirectX 12, whether it will. You know, developers will have more time to play with it. But once again, it depends on the amount of money you've got. Like if you're super duper rich and you, you know, you don't mind dropping a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand, or whatever on your system every year, then. It doesn't really make a difference, right? But anyway, hopefully you found this somewhat informative, interesting, something to pass the time when you're on the bus, what have you. But I'm going to get going, so take care.